Hello again, everybody. Dave Brown, Corey Macklin here at uh, ringside, ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. But today, a little bit, uh, a little bit different start for the program. The King has joined us right here with uh, something, uh, something very special. Well, uh, it is very special, and every week here on USWA Wrestling, it was always special for me to come out of that dressing room door and, and always an enjoyable situation to walk past all the great wrestling fans that have been here over the years, shake hands, greet them, and always the last person that I shook hands with right before I came over here to talk to you and Corey was a guy that was a great friend of mine named Ernest Everhart. He always stood right here next to the desk, and he was a head of USWA security. And uh, it's, you know, a sad occasion, the fact that uh, Ernie passed away this past week. And as a matter of fact, his funeral is today. And I wanted to come out here and say that we want to dedicate this show today to Ernie. And a lot of people, I, I got a little bit of, uh, if, if, if I could, if there may be some people out there that are not familiar with who Ernie is. Uh, this show, of course, goes all over, all over the country. And uh, in Memphis every week, I had my own show for years, the Jerry Lawler Show, and, and Ernie was a mainstay on there. He was on uh, as a guest several times, and he was on as, a, as my own personal bodyguard. And I just have a couple of little clips here with Ernie in it, so I wanted to show these. He would love that. And, uh, and then I had a couple more words I wanted to say. But here's uh, a couple of shots of our friend Ernest Everhart. Oh, wait, 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 and we're going to show hey, it. King. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, you're Hold late, up. man. It's time for your drum lesson, man. Drum lesson? Oh, my yeah. gosh, my drum lesson. You're taking drum lessons? Do what? You're taking drum lessons? No, I teach drum lessons. Wait. You just, teach them? Yeah, hang on. Go ahead and... Uh, Where are you going? Do the blast from the past. I'll be, I'll be right back. Hang on. <sighs> just do the blast from the past. You're teaching drum lessons? We're back. and Take, <laughs> take a look at that. <laughs> 400 shows in hair on Ernie's head. Ernie is back, and he has had his, he has had his head... Redone today to com commemorate the 400th show. That is great. You know it is. Something's got to be wrong with a man that would do that to his head. <laughs> no, it's great. Oh. And we appreciate him coming by here and doing Sick. that on our, on our special 400th show. Atlanta at Dallas. That's a big game. It is a big game. And it's after six years, Dallas is in the playoffs again. But I'm going to go with an upset. I'm going to pick the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> You're going to make a lot of people mad. Well, you know, right. Hammer, he's so, it's yeah, too he, legit he won't be to, there, though, in to Dallas. quit. Boy, that hockey coach was mad, wasn't he, Coach Paul? <laughs> well, we'll be back in a minute, and with my bodyguard here today, we'll be back with um, the Memphis card and the me number. Well, there he was. Uh, Ernest was a great friend, uh, not only of mine, but everybody here in the USWA, and he loved wrestling, uh, and, and, you know, it's great to have friends like that, and it's really tough to lose them, and I think a lot of people you know, like to remember somebody with a moment of silence in a situation like this. But I think Ernie would like to be remembered with maybe a big round of applause from this great studio audience that he loved to be with every day. So, we're good. Let's just hear it one time for Ernie Everhart, okay? And like I said, we want to dedicate this show today to Ernie, and I know he's, he's watching us somewhere. Ernie. Thank you, King. We'll be right back. is here, and I don't know if I'm talking to Scotty Flamingo it's or Johnny, Johnny Polo. Polo, you or idiot. Johnny now, Polo. Give me this. Now, the reason I'm out here, Brian, I know you're, you're kind of wondering yourself while you're out here, but I needed you out here because I got to say, I'm in the greatest mood, Dave Brown. I'm ecstatic. I am, I am like the happiest camper running about, and it's all because of my best friend, Brian Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> See, my best friend, Brian Christopher, everyone knows, me and him ride up and down the highways. We fly planes together. We do everything together. I mean, everything. And, well, a couple weeks ago, I was a little depressed. I was in a bit of a blue funk. I was sad. I was blue. And, well, Brian Christopher, this, this philosopher, this wise man, he said to me, Scotty, I know why you're depressed. Because you're not being yourself. He said, you got to be Johnny Polo, what you are. You're being Scotty Flamingo. You're trying to please all these people, all these fans. He goes, you notice, I never try and please the fans. I do what I want to do. I say what I want to say. And that's why I'm so successful. And, Scotty... And he started calling me Johnny because that's my real name. He said, Johnny, he's the only one that knew. He said, Johnny, you got to be yourself. You got to be Johnny Polo. And ever since then, man, I've been so happy. I've been ecstatic, man. My life has turned around. Everything's going great for me. The world has changed. Man, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. My best friend. Oh, it's great, Dave. Brown. Let's go. And now, so I think to myself, I said, man, I got to repay Brian Christopher for giving Johnny Polo back his life. Now he's made me a happy man. And, and hold on. Wait right here. Hold on. Johnny Polo has left, but he's happy. Yeah. There's no doubt he about it. He's a much happier well, man than he, Dave he, Brown. He's left. Nope. What is this? He's, 
This is the gift you hey, brought shut him? up, Dave Brown. This is my interview. Now, Brian, do you know what this is? Yeah, that's a broom. Look, look at that, Dave. He knows what it is. He knows that this is a broom. Not only is he a philosopher, but he's a very bright man. I can tell. Do you know what this is, Brian? It's a mop. It's a, look at that. He knows. That's a mop. You Throughout see? Throughout it, too. See, everyone knows what these things are, but it, it's like a tragedy because I never knew what these things were. I didn't know what these cleaning supplies, these implements, these tools of the bourgeoisie were. I had no idea because I'd always led a pampered life. Ever since I was a little baby in my crib, my parents used to have English nannies come and take care of me. They'd powder my bottom. You know, they would tuck me in. If I got a little scared at night, you know, they would, they would tell me a bedtime story, tell me everything was okay, give me a little, sing me a little lullaby. And they took care of me all, all through my entire life. And, and now, you know, when I was 16, I got to pick my own nanny. That's pretty cool. Anyway, but now I want to repay Brian Christopher for all he's done for Johnny Pole, and I want to give you my nanny. <laughs> no, no, I, I, don't, I don't need a nanny. No, 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 I, I, got three, I, got, I got three of them. It's okay, I'll give you one of them. Look, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. No, I don't want no old, old English lady. Messing with my stuff, I don't need a nanny. Seriously, look, I look, don't Brian, need one. Look, Brian, we're best friends, right? I really don't need one, Scotty. I don't look, we're best friends. Try it out. If, just try it for two or three weeks. If it don't work, okay? If it don't work, well, then we'll say we tried and it didn't work. But it's the least I can do to repay you for what you've done to me. Made me Johnny Polo again. A happy camper, man. I'm a bullion. I'm filled with a zest for life. Please, here, close your eyes. Let me, let me, bring, let me, bring, out, let me bring out my nanny. Hold on. Close your eyes. Cover up. Come on. Come on, Brian. Best friend. <laughs> All right? All right? All right. Hold, hold on. Okay. Well, let's see here, friends. Uh, uh, it's Scotty Flamingo, I want to call him. Johnny Polo's nanny coming out here to repay Brian Christopher. Oh, my goodness. To repay Brian Christopher. Okay, Brian, okay. Open your eyes. Here's your new nanny. Nothing like what I expected. You, you know, she'll take care of you. She'll tuck you in at night. You know, she'll sing you a little story. She'll sing you a little lullaby. She'll tell you stories. She'll dust. She'll clean. She'll wax the car. You know, if um, if you got a hair out of place, she'll fix it. Just like that. Show, show them. Just like that. Just like that. Miss <laughs> Simpson is the best nanny in the whole nannying profession, and she's all yours. I don't know what to say, Scotty, except uh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh thank come you. on. <laughs> look at that. Look how happy he is. That's, that's the kind of joy. Take her with you. Take her with you. Look at, look at the joy he's brought me. I'm bringing him some joy, Dave. I feel like, I feel like Santa Claus today, man. This is great. Let's go to commercial because I want to go back and talk to him. Man, this is, this is great. Well, going to commercial is one of the better ideas I've heard the last four or five minutes. Let's do that, and we'll be back with more from the USWA. I can't believe what you just did. Johnny Polo, some strange oh, sense of values there, let me tell you. Well, anyway, I'm glad he's out of here. Uh, the the uh, USWA, you know, of course, gets requests all the time. Want to know this about a wrestler, that about a wrestler, a little bit more about him. And as a result, uh, i got to try a new feature, which will appear from time to time. It's called Jennifer on the Road, with kind of special insights to the lives of USWA wrestlers. Take a look.
I'm so excited. I'm all packed and ready to go. Now, as you already know, when the wrestlers are at work, they wrestle. Well, what I'm going to find out is what the wrestlers do in their spare time. I've already found out some of them like to fish, play golf, and hunt. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing what the wrestlers do when they're not at work. So why don't you all come along? All right, very good. We'll be looking for those uh, special features coming up. On the way to the ring, wanted to stop you just for a second, Jeff, and talk to you because I know you got an important match coming up right here. That's right. Uh, Johnny Polo up there, I got a match with in just a second. But what I want to talk about, and I hate to keep harping on it, Dave, but uh, I want to talk about what's not going on. Brian Christopher, again, has refused every challenge that I've put up to him for the Southern title, and it just makes me sick to my stomach, Dave. When I watch Brian Christopher walk to the ring with a belt around his waist, and I know that he'll never feel the shoes of the legends of, of Jackie Fargo and Jimmy Valiant and Jerry Lawler. Hey, now you... Shut, up. Shut, Shut up. your big mouth. We didn't ask you Shut your up, time. you big liar. We're talking oh, to Jeff. You big, stinking liar. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. I've had it up to hear about legends this, legends that. You're nothing but a big liar, Jeff Jarrett. You don't know what a legend is. You're out here talking about, I won't give you a title shot. I, oh, I just want to wave my fist oh, down your throat. On, hey, listen to me. I offered you a title shot earlier in the week, and you declined. I said all you had to do was put your hair on the line, right? Is that not right? You put your hair on the line, and you get a title shot, right? Tell all the people about that, huh? Come on. Why don't you give me a return match? You didn't beat me. Steve Dawn Rex King beat me. Why don't you give me a return shot? Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. You, my friend, have no idea what a real legend is. Scotty, I got something in mind. I got, hey. Watch, watch I it, watch it. Idea. I got an idea. Scotty, come over here. Listen. Listen to me. Jeff Jarrett, you want to know what a real legend looks like? You want to know what a real legend looks like, huh? One looks like there's one back there, Jerry Lawler, Jimmy Valiant, handsome, handsome Jimmy Valiant. Oh, shut your mouth! I want to bring out a real legend, because I brought one here today, and I got a big plan. Yeah, Frank, come on. I guess it's going to be on. Frank Hickey, huh? Yeah. No, come on. A legend? Yeah, I got me a legend. Big time legend? Yeah. The right. last legend was what, 80? Oh, my goodness. That's Tony Falk. You see that, Jeff Jarrett? Feast your eyes on this man, because this is a living legend. This man is the man that has beat them all. This right here is former driver, Tony. He is former boy, Tony. He is former, what else have you been? The Night Stalker. That's right. This is a man that has won every match he's ever been into. This is what a real legend looks like, Jeff Jarrett. And I got a deal for you. I got a deal. Brian, you make a disgrace at everything about the title, about legends. The only thing this guy's famous for is that he is the only guy in the sport of wrestling to lose 57 consecutive matches. No, no, no. That was in the past, Jeff Jarrett. That was in the past. He is a changed man. And today, I want to make you a deal, Jeff Jarrett. You say, I never give you a title shot, huh? That's right. Well, listen to me. Read my lips. You step in the ring today with this legend. If you can beat a real legend, then, and only then, I will give you a Southern Heavyweight title shot. But you got to earn it. Match with us. You, I guess you're calling the matches now, huh? He's gonna have a day off. I call the shots from now on. Careful, all of them are out here, Jeff. And, and all I gotta do is beat uh, living legend Tony Falk. That's, that's right. If you can beat a real legend, well, you get well, hold on. I guess I suppose that you're gonna be out here, and I gotta get distracted by her, and, and, and I guess Johnny Polo. So it's, I gotta fight all four of you. No, no. Me. And Miss Simpson will head to the back. We'll go all the way to the back of the building. All right. All right, Tony Falk. And if I beat him, I get a title shot. That's right. You got it. You got it. All right. Johnny, Johnny, I want you to sit out here and make sure that, that Tony right here gets a fair deal. You know, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll sit out here and do it, but he don't need it, man. He's the living legend. That's right. That's right. That's right. I can do it, bro. Yeah, the living legend. I remember your promise. You and Miss Simpson head on back to the back of the building there and stay out of it. And we'll hope yeah. that... Uh, Mr. Polo will stay out of it, too. All right. Referee T.D. Steele calling for the bell. Tony Falk jumps Jeff Jarrett immediately as they step into the ring. Yeah, Jeff goes under Falk, comes back. He's got it covered. Oh, look at it. Look Polo. At Polo, yeah. 
Tony Polo pulls Jeff Jarrett right off of Tony Paul. Jeff had him covered. Good, he got him quickly there, too. Both with Jeff into the road. Bounce that flip from Jarrett. One, two. I thought he had him there for a moment, but the living legend, according to Brian Christopher, Tony Falk's still alive. The legend. Look at that. Tony right, Falk. Look at that right fist he keeps throwing in. Yeah, keeps throwing those big right hands, Falk does. And Johnny Polo from outside interfering. Oh, look at Polo over now and away on Jeff Jarrett. Christopher and Jennifer Simpson may not be out here, but Polo interfering in the bout between Falk and Jerry. Down to the throat from Tony Falk. Tony Falk. Brian Christopher brings him in. Falk wrestles out of Dallas, Texas. And he's got a hot task for his baby back in the USWA. I get Big elbow from Jeff. Covers him. Look at Polo. All right. Jeff had him pinned, and Polo grabbed a handful of hair from outside. Referee, yeah. He didn't see it, but he suspects. He's warned to, uh, uh, Polo. I keep wanting to say Flamingo. Johnny oh, Polo geez. about it. I think that'll be right, too, to say Flamingo. I don't think he knows what he is. Johnny Polo jumps in the ring again. Pulls Jeff Jarrett off. Jeff had him covered, and Polo broke the cover. Tony Falk nailing away on Jarrett. Oh, look at this. This is just getting to be obnoxious now. Johnny Polo continues to clobber away on Jeff Jarrett. Every time Reverie TD still turns his back, Polo goes to work on Jeff in there. Falk whips him in. Jarrett comes off with a big boot. Sends Tony Falk down. Now Falk on a right hand. Takes him and all reversal here. Falk whips him in. Jeff goes under, slides under the rope. Oh, look at this. Yeah. He's going after Johnny Polo now. Jared having to fight both of them. Slams him right into each other. He's got Polo outside of the ring. Slams him into the apron there. Here comes Jennifer Simpson telling Jeff Jared. Yeah, Miss Simpson, I don't know what she said, but uh, she was upset that Johnny Polo was getting, <laughs> getting blasted by Jeff Jarrett. Oh, look at that. Heads together. Oh, Polo oh, grabs Jeff by the hair, throws him in the ring. My goodness gracious. What a day here today. Jeff Jarrett trying to defeat Tony Falk to get an assured rematch finally with Brian Christopher for the Southern title, a rematch that Christopher has denied him. <laughs> yeah, Falk's got uh, Jeff Jarrett. Trouble here. Miss right Simpson has got a broom. Yeah. Oh, boy, she broke that broom on Jeff Jarrett. Jennifer Simpson did. Jarrett grabs a hold to the broom. Jabs her with it. He's going out to Jennifer Simpson. Hey, Eddie Marlin goes over and grabs Jennifer. Miss Simpson, uh... Eddie Marlin has her in tow. What is this, Brian? Hey! Hey, come on. Get this dirty old man away from What are you put? What are either one of you doing here? Six foot Johnny, I've been back to him for four years. He hasn't had a scratch on him since I've been to Get out of here. You don't have any. Eddie Marlin trying to send Brian Christopher and Miss Simpson out of here. Uh, they had no business in here to begin with yeah. because. Brian Christopher promised that they would go to the back of the building and stay there. Meanwhile, back in the ring, Tony yeah. Falk has Jeff Jarrett down on the mat, choking him. Johnny Polo's still at ringside, and it looks like some semblance of order has been restored. I would feel a lot better if Johnny Polo had been banned from ringside, too, but that wasn't part of the agreement. Not only is he at ringside, David, he's interfering in the back. Uh, yeah, the which, well, yeah. yeah is, Look at that. Doesn't have to be an agreement about that. That's just flat illegal. Illegal it is, and uh, Polo choking Jeff Jarrett up on the ropes there. Referee TD still tells Polo to get off of him and get back in the corner. Look at Jeff Jarrett coming back on fault. Oh, shows Referee TD still in the corner. 
Goes after Polo now out on the floor. How do he bust his Johnny Polo with a right hand? Jared, got Falk and Polo out on the concrete floor. Jeff again has both of them. Got oh, Look out, got Miss those. Simpson here with a mop now. Miss Simpson got that mop on Jeff. Swings out to Jeff. Jared gets it from her. Goes over and grabs Miss Simpson now. Oh, here's Eddie Marlin back out, though. Eddie Marlin has Miss Simpson in tow again. Hey, hey, Brian Christopher, hey, get your hands off of him. Hey, and Brian, get your hands off of him. Referee T.D. Steele's calling for the bell. Eddie Marlin's trying to help out Jeff Garrett while Polo and Falk jump on him. Well, Miss Simpson's got that bucket or whatever it's in there. I don't know. There she goes in the ring, Brian Christopher hanging on to Eddie Marlin. They've got Jeff double team. They've got him down. She, she's got yeah. something there. We've rung the bell, TD. It's it's over. Yeah, it's we were a disqualification when uh, Johnny Polo hit the ring. Falk was disqualified. But meanwhile, what she's spraying in his face looks like some of that tire foam. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here comes Jeff Gale with the Missouri Tiger. Out to help Jeff Jarrett. Gaylord, jump on Polo and Falk. Oh, it's out of the ring. Oh, Jeff Gaylord. Gaylord went up to Miss Simpson. She got out of that. Well, he has finally succeeded in clearing the ring. Now he's trying to get Brian Christopher loose so that uh, he get Eddie Marlin loose from Brian oh, Christopher. Oh, they double up. up on him. Yeah, they knocked Gaylord over oh, by the desk. Goodness. Oh, look out. Boy, you talk about wild action. It's all over the studio today. There goes Miss Simpson again. She's got the other broom. Slams down on Jeff there with her. Boy, look at her walk away on Jeff. Jared. Jared stuff all over his face. And boy, Miss Simpson breaks the broom. Look out now. Here comes Miss Simpson. Miss Texas will even that up Miss real Simpson. quick. And she goes after Miss Simpson. Look at that. Brian Christopher, look out, grabs Miss Texas. Oh, oh she, he hit her Don't with a fist that? right in the face. Come on, Brian, look out. Oh, man, that is ridiculous, I tell you. Christopher just nails away on Miss Texas. Slams her down hard. Miss Simpson kicking away on Miss Texas. Eddie Marlin's out on the floor. No order in this one, boy. Action all over the studio. Johnny Polo and Tony Falk have Jeff Gaylord down on the floor, and they've just shoved Eddie Marlin down. Brian Christopher continues to jump up and down on Jeff Jarrett in the ring, while Miss Simpson is now choking Miss Texas. Here comes the king. Here comes Coco Beware. Oh, look at Lawler. He's trying to grab a hold of Miss Simpson. She slides under there, and Hot tells it out quickly. Boy, let me tell you. This Miss Simpson has been something else today. And, and as Christopher. Oh, uh, we're going to sort it out, fans. I don't know how it can get more excited, but we'll find out when we return in just a moment. We we're getting ready for Corey to tell everybody about out of town, but the crowd's invited the king back out here. I so, appreciate uh, it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, the one president of my fan club over there, boo, that's all right, I don't mind it. Anyway, uh, it's a pleasure to come back out here, especially following that uh, that wild action. Wow. Uh, man, oh man, I want to tell you. I want to talk just a second about some of the action, the USW action that's going to be coming up around the area. I want to mention that tonight, going to be over in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Big card over in Jonesboro, Arkansas tonight. Uh, coming up Friday night is Covington, Tennessee. It's going to be great up in Covington. And also coming up real soon, Corinth, Mississippi. We're going to be down in Corinth, Mississippi with the USWA. And I haven't been down there in a long time. Some great wrestling fans down there. Uh, mentioned real quickly about uh, some softball games. One that we originally had scheduled for Humboldt, Tennessee. has been rescheduled to June the 6th, coming up in uh, Humboldt. And we're going to be up there. Uh, along with the fine people from Walmart and Humboldt to raise money for Labonner Children's Hospital. And uh, we want everybody to turn out in Humboldt. Just mentioned that, uh, you know, when you come to see these uh, softball games that we have around the area, uh, the first 200 people that show up get free tickets to Monday Night Wrestling. Mm -hmm. So you can come down to Memphis and see us wrestle down there. So we'll be in Humboldt 
on June the 6th, and uh, and I got a big uh, tournament, Jerry Lawler softball tournament coming up June 19th. I'll give more information about that next week. Okay? All right, I think uh, we, we have some information right here. Okay, yeah, there, there's a number you can call right there uh, in Memphis. Mr. Guy Coffey handles all our uh, softball bookings, and, the, and you can get information from him about the tournament also. And if you'd like to have us come to your city and help you raise some money, there's a number to call, 358-2924. Uh, we might, I, I need to start bringing that softball bat to the matches here on Monday, Saturday morning, I think. Well, we're gonna... I, would have come in useful here today, even up some of the mops and the brooms and stuff. Yeah, huh? okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go ahead and tell everything you want to about the rest of the towns. I want to be back in a couple of minutes because I got a big surprise for Burt Prentice in just a few minutes I'm going to come out here with, okay? Yeah, wait to hear about that. First, Corey, let's check all that big action. You got a full sheet there. Let's check yeah, it out. We do got big action and uh, full sheet indeed tonight. 8 o'clock, Jonesboro, Arkansas. El Bell Community Center on Church Street, Jonesboro Championship Wrestling, 8 o'clock bell time tonight. Big card with the King, Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, the Birdman, Coco Beware, Brian Christopher, PG-13, Rex King, and Steve Dahl. It's a big lineup tonight, 8 o'clock in Jonesboro at the El Bell Community Center, right there on Church Street. Want to be there tonight in Jonesboro for all of the big USWA action. Friday night, May 28th, 8 o'clock p.m., Covington, Tennessee, at the uh, National Guard Armory in Covington, the King, Jerry Lawler, the Birdman, Coco Beware, Jeff Jarrett, King and Dahl, Brian Christopher, Danny Davis, the Master of Terrace, Big line up Friday night. That's coming up Friday night, 8 o'clock. I've been coming to Tennessee Thursday, June 3rd, Crenshaw, Mississippi. Crenshaw Gym. Tickets are on sale at City Hall for Crenshaw. Also, FNS Grocery and Girlies One Stop. Save a dollar on advance tickets for Crenshaw, Mississippi. Coming up Thursday, June 3rd. The King, uh, the Jerry Lawler, Coco Beware, Jeff Jarrett, Brian Christopher, Miss Texas. First time Coco wears in Crenshaw. You can contact Oscar Ballo for more information for all of the big happenings in Crenshaw, Mississippi, Thursday, June 3rd. Friday, June 4th, Corinth, Mississippi at the high school. So what's about a Warrior Booster Club? Tickets on sale at Lonnie's Sporting Goods. You see all of the people scheduled for Corinth, Mississippi. As the King stated, he's going to be there. Jerry Lawler, Coco B. Wears on the card as well. A big lineup is scheduled for Corinth, Mississippi coming up. Also, Rick's King and Steve Dahl on that card. Also, June 4th in Kennett, Missouri, 8 o'clock at the American Legion Building. In uh, Kennett, Missouri, Jeff Jarrett, Danny Davis, Brian Christopher, ladies match, PG-13, the Masters of Terror on that card as well. That's coming up uh, also Friday, June 4th. Friday, June 18th, 8 o'clock in Batesville, Mississippi at South Panola High School. USWA wrestling in action coming soon. Also Ripley, Mississippi, West Point, Mississippi, and Cleveland, Mississippi. That's USWA Championship Wrestling on tour. Boys, nothing like seeing it live when it comes to your hometown. Want to be right there for all of the action tonight, 8 o'clock, Jonesboro at the Earl Bell Community Center, Friday night in Covington, Tennessee. You want to be right there when it comes to see you. We're coming to see you in a few minutes. We'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. The USW action continues. Okay, thanks for calling. And don't forget to call back next week, and I'll have some more gossip for you. USWA has given me the opportunity to travel all over the country interviewing the wrestlers when they're not in the ring. And you would not believe the gossip that I have heard. I found out who's dating who, who's really married and who's not, who's leaving the USWA and who's coming. And if you would like for me to share some of this gossip with you, you can call the USWA hotline. Now kids, if you're under 18, don't forget to check with your parents. Oops, I have another call. Hi, this is Jennifer. Well, this is Mike Samples right here with, uh, I, I suppose you're going to introduce uh, the person who's with you here, huh? Dave Brown, let me get right to the heart of the matter. I want everybody here to know what's going on and you to know what's going on because like you to seem know. to always be uninformed. And the people at home, I want them to know exactly what's happening. I want to introduce him, you're correct. He's Mr. C.W. Bergstrom, but I need to tell you just a little bit about this man so you understand exactly why he's here. Mr. Bergstrom was formerly known as Principal Bergstrom. He was a principal at a, at a school district in the state of Oregon. And in his school district, the students towed the line, Dave Brown. They're not like, well, they're not like these derelicts that are sitting along ringside over here. They minded their manners. They walked the line. When the bell rang, they didn't run to and fro out in the hallway and stand at the lockers and talk to each other and chew gum. And he stood out in the hallway and he made sure they walked single file in silence in military fashion to their next class. They sat down, they did their homework, and they shut up. You understand, he had control. He is a master of discipline. 
if you, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. You've heard that. He does never spoil a child because he doesn't spare the rod. He used the leather strap, and he used it day after day after day until his students minded. And I'll tell you something. He had the best and most well-behaved school children anywhere in the world. These people right here, you can tell, are derelicts, right? In Japan, the people there, they're nice and polite and quiet because they've been taught the Bergstrom method, you understand? He is the man that can bring discipline anywhere. But you know, there's always some bleeding heart, liberal, mamby-pamby, goody-two-shoes, do-gooder that wants to stick their nose in the business. Well, they did. And they got Mr. Principal Bergstrom fired from his job. And Dave Brown, when I found out about that, I was very, very angry because this man, he's a hero to me because he can take little punk snot-nosed kids and he can get them in line. I said, well, great. If you can do that, you can do it to wrestlers too. He said, sure I can. I said, bring your strap, come down here to the USWA, and we'll put you in the ring with all these punks and all these brats and all these guys that have been spoiled, and he can give them his brand of discipline, Dave Brown. And I guarantee you when it's all over, there will be a lot of people here with belt marks on their backside, but they'll be well behaved, and they'll show us respect, and the fans will show us respect, and they will respect Principal Bergstrom, and I would say you had better too, and I'd love to stay and chat. But Mr. Bergstrom, Principal Bergstrom, has an appointment in his office with this gentleman. So, Principal. Uh, he, he does indeed have a match coming up right here against, uh, against Big Freezer Thompson, who is waiting in the ring right now. We're not out here to talk to you. We're out here to teach this man some respect. Well, you're out here to wrestle is what you're out here to do. Let's see if Bergstrom can wrestle. Uh, you know, fans, before you uh, put too much stock in all the things that Mike Samples has said, remember who just said it. It was indeed Mike Samples talking there and telling you all of that stuff. Hey. C.W. Bergstrom, who uh, has Mike Samples over in his corner, now stepping up on the ring apron. Referee T.D. Steele is waiting. Freezer Thompson is waiting, too. And Mike Samples jawing at, uh, at Freezer. If you don't think so, you just watch that. Now T.D. Steele. Finally calls for the bell, and here we go. Principal C.W. Bergstrom in the USWA, formerly employed by the Board of Education in Oregon, says Mike Samples. Yeah, says Samples. Yeah. C.W. Bergstrom backed into the corner by William Freezer Thompson. And it's going to be a break for the Principal Bergstrom. Comes out of the corner and... Principal C.W. Bergstrom. Oh, slams down on Freezer Thompson again. You understand what's wrong with the country today is that people have no discipline and no respect for their elders and for the people that should be respected. C.W. Bergstrom, Principal C.W. Bergstrom is here to give them the lesson that they need to learn. He's going to teach them discipline and respect. That's his job here now. Well, Mike Sample, let me just say this. Some of the stuff you say may, uh, may very well be true, but who deserves the respect? Does C.W. Bergstrom deserve the respect? Well, that's what we don't know, but we'll find out perhaps as this match continues here. Boy, C.W. Bergstrom, uh, Principal Bergstrom is about to get some respect from Freezer Thompson as he, boy, one, two, three, he got him, yeah. Principal C.W. Bergstrom gets the win, and an impressive win, too, boy. Well, he can wrestle, I guess there's no doubt about it. As, uh, uh, now, wait a minute. Now, since there is, there's no excuse for this right here. Get him out of here. You, you brought him in here. what he is famous for, his disciplinary action. He is going to put the strap to everybody here, and he's starting here today. And if you don't like it, Dave, I suggest you and Corey Macklin get up in the ring and try to stop him. Well, I tell you, I'm not going to try to stop him uh, in the ring, but I don't like it. This is absolutely senseless. He won the match. He should win the match, get his hand raised, and get out of here along with you. T.D. Steele now finally sending him out of the ring. And C.W. Bergstrom, Principal Bergstrom, with a debut here, which was impressive in the beginning as he won the match. Now it just ruins the whole thing right here. Boy. We've got more coming up from the USWA.
Ford has joined us here, and uh, I know you got. Uh, hey, what do you say, Memphis? Go. I know you got a score or two to settle in the USWA too, huh? Dave Brown, let me tell you something. I've got this match booked with Principal C. W. Burkstam. Boy, this is a dream come true, baby. Because when I was a little toddler going to school, I had a principal just like you, Bergstrom. One that not, the rule was six licks, but you like to give 60 licks. And you thought because I was an athlete, I needed more discipline. So they whipped me more. And if there's one thing I've always been looking forward to ever since I was a little toddler, and that's taking a strap and whipping that principal senseless. Right, have you kids ever been bad at that principal? All right, now, now look out. Samples, you, this is his yeah, interview no, time. I, I know already, it is. You've I know had it is, your say. Like, you're exactly the kind of man we're talking about. You're the, you're the kind of guy, you were, you were a football player, That's a right. big dumb jock, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, a big dumb jock. You're the kind of guy that, no, he didn't do his homework, he didn't study, he got good grades. The teachers passed you just because you were an athlete. No, I it's not. Yeah, just because you were an athlete. You had special privileges, and you gave lots of troubles to, to principals like him. You're the kind of guy that gave him nightmares and kept him up late. You're the kind of guy we're talking about. You he's had the, the easy guy, road. He's the guy that got dismissed from Oregon because he's a child abuser. He doesn't know what discipline is. He gets his pleasure out of whipping little innocent children. And that's well, why- apparently you I'm don't gonna... have any discipline yourself, okay? I've the way you're talking to me, brother. the way you're talking to me, you have no discipline. I've got plenty and you of lack discipline. respect. And I'm going to show you some discipline. Oh, is that right? Oh, hey, yeah. Sample! Look, sample snuck around behind oh, him. Boy. And Blom Gaylord across the back of the neck. Yeah, and Bergstrom has got that strap. Slam it out on Gaylord with that strap while Mike Samples, hey, Samples is holding him now. Oh, and Principal Bertram. Man, this kind of stuff. Come on, Samples. C.W. Bertram. Here comes some help. Thank goodness. Here comes Freezer Thompson leading the way. Yeah. Here comes some help, though, for Jeff. All right, Samples, you and Bergstrom were uninvited yeah, anyway. Now, Just get out of here, please. I'm going to tell you, Corey, Gaylord will settle that score. Oh, yeah. I'll guarantee you. Boy, look at Jeff. They're trying to hold him back. There goes Bergstrom and Samples out of here. Well, let's, let's us take a break. We'll be back. Hey, want to check the action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South. Here's Eddie, right here. Yeah, Eddie. Hey, baby, what's happening here this morning? I've got a new lineup. I've already notified uh, Lyle upstairs. Okay. Here's a copy for you, and Corey, here's a copy okay. for you. Okay, let me, get, let me get rid of that. We'll get to, yeah. And that's the new lineup uh, on this car. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, <laughs> I like a couple of these. Yeah, a couple of good changes. Let's, uh, all right, Lyle's got them, so let's uh, let's just run down through the whole thing here okay. and uh, and uh, check it out. Uh, the revised card for the Mid South Coliseum uh -huh. coming up Monday night, right here. Opening match, no change here. Uh, Steve Marino, well, one change. Legend, Tony Falk. A oh, living yeah. legend, yeah. Tony Falk. Man boy. who lost 57 in a row, as uh, as uh, Jeff pointed out. That's his legend right there. Steve Marino goes against. The legend Tony Falk. Then the middleweight title will be at stake. The other of the Marino brothers, Bill Marino, will be challenging Danny Davis. Middleweight, uh, middleweight title hangs in the balance. Coming up after that, a hubcap on a pole match. The Masters of Terror going against PG-13. This one, uh, the history of this one goes back a couple of weeks. Uh, interference in, uh, in a couple of the uh, matches uh, by PG-13. And as a result, uh, are, are by, I beg your pardon, by Masters of Terror in matches involving uh, members of PG-13, especially Wolfie D. And uh, as a result, going to put them all in there. Tag team action, put a hubcap up on a pole. Whoever gets it can use it as a legal weapon in the hubcap on a pole match. Then, it's not all. This is new. 
Now this is going to be a belt on a pole match. Now the match was already scheduled. Jeff Gaylord against Principal C.W. Yeah. Bergstrom. Uh, Mike Samples will be in uh, Bergstrom's corner. But now they're going to put that belt up on a pole. I, I, I suppose that was uh, probably a Jeff Gaylord's request. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, Eddie Marlin says uh, put it on a pole. And again, whoever gets it uh, off the pole is going to be able to use it as a legal weapon. Gaylord against Principal C.W. Bergstrom, someone we just met a few moments ago, introduced by Mike Samples. And already I got great problems with Bergstrom and uh, Samples' methods. I've always had problems with Samples' methods, but add Bergstrom to that. Oh. Grudge match coming up. Oh, look oh, at this. Oh, look, yeah. Here's like a change. Look at, yeah, but what a change. After... Uh, Miss Texas and Miss Simpson got into oh. it in the ring there a few minutes ago. Makes this one very, very interesting now because it's not Brian Christopher against Jeff Jarrett. It is Brian Christopher and Miss Simpson. His uh, nanny is a gift from uh, from uh, Johnny Polo against Jeff Jarrett and Miss Texas is going to be in there with Jeff. That should be a fine match. It is not the title match, which Jeff wanted, but it is, in fact, going to be a grudge mixed tag team match coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Yeah, and I don't doubt that Jeff doesn't want this one either, boy, after what Miss Simpson did. Out here. Well, you're absolutely right. I, I'm sure Jeff will put the title uh, title uh, quest on hold for a week just to kind of yeah. kind of uh, get some satisfaction in this regard right here. Then the USWA tag titles will be at stake. Simply Divine, Rex King, and Steve Dahl We'll be going against Jerry Lawler and Coco Beware. Look at the bottom line there. Burt Prentice will be in a straight jacket. Boy, yeah. I wish you could keep him in that all of the time. I, Prentice will have it on Monday night. I <laughs> absolutely agree with you. I mean, this guy interferes. He runs his mouth. He's all over oh, the place. Gee, so yeah. put him in a straight jacket. All right. He, he's back in the USWA. He's signed King and Doll, he says. So you can't keep him out of the ring area. Fine, put him in a straight jacket and let him be there and then hope he can't do any damage that way. Jerry Lawler, Coco Beware team to go <laughs> against Simply Divine, Rex King, and Steve Dahl. Big night coming up oh, Monday indeed. night. Can't wait to be right there and see it all, too. And a couple of these changes, let me tell you here, look uh, look mighty exciting. You got the grudge mixed match now, and you got the belt on the pole. Gaylord, I know I know what's oh, going to yeah. be on his mind from the moment he steps into that ring. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Talking about Lawler and Ware going against uh, Simply Divine. Take a look at a little history in that match right here. and you saw Prentice there from uh, outside interfering in the action. Here comes the king right here. Coco Beware is with him. And we want to get a word from them about, uh, perhaps about the match which has occurred, but uh, certainly about the one which is coming up this very week. King? Yeah, I want to say just a couple of words here to Mr. Burt Prentice. You know, I'm sure that they had themselves a little victory celebration after that last match Monday night. I'm sure that they sat back in their dressing room with big smiles on their faces. Because you see, they retained their World Tag Team titles, and Burt Prentice, with that big fat face of his smiling, when I think about it, it makes me sick. So Burt, we wanted to find a way to nullify you. We wanted to find a way to make sure that without your interference, Coco Ware and I would come out with those belts around our waist after we'd beat the brains out of Rex King and Steve Dahl because we proved last week that they are no problem for us. But you had to come up there with the Coke and throw it in Coco's eyes and do your damage. Well, this week, we went to Eddie Marlin. We said, how about putting a straight jacket on that fat slob? He said, that's a great idea. So when he informed Burt Prentice that he was gonna have to be put in a straight jacket, the next thing Eddie gets a call from Burt Prentice's attorney and says, that if we put him in a straight jacket, but supposedly because he's not mentally uh, deranged, so that's a matter of a question, that there's gonna be all sorts of legal problems. So, Bert, you got your way on that. 
Not going to be put in a straight jacket. And the more I thought about it, Coco, there's probably not one big enough to fit that fat pig anyway. But we got another surprise for you, Burt Prentice. We're going to immobilize you down there this week. And Eddie Marlin has said there's nothing you or your attorneys can do about this. And we're going to let the fans help us. We're going to let the people at ringside help us. I'm going to tell you just exactly how it's going to work. First of all, very fitting for you, we're going to bring out one of these big, nice garbage bags. You see this? We're going to take one of those big, hefty bags, hefty boy, and we're going to cut a hole right in the top of it, and we're going to let one of the wrestling fans slide this right down over your big, fat body. And once that's done, we're going to let another wrestling fan take one of these rolls of duct tape, and they're going to go around and around, and well, that'll be like a trip around the world when you go around that fat slob. But they're going to go around you, Burt Prentice, until your arms are taped to your side like a big, fat cocoon. Do you understand that? And we're not finished yet. We're going to have some rope for another wrestling fan. Not like this. We're going we're gonna to have to have a lot more rope than this, right, Coco? We're going to have some rope, and we're going to let the last wrestling fan tie you up like a nice little surprise package. And when it's all done, all you're going to be able to do is stand there and watch Coco Beware and the King beat Rex King and Steve Dahl and take those World Tag Team titles and put them right around our waist, whether you like it or not. Tell them about it, Coco. And you know one thing, Dave? Prentice, I'm going to have me a rope. And I hadn't forgot about that belt around my neck. Because I tell you, when I get that rope around that fat neck of yours, I'm not going to stop. It's going to have to call the emergency baby to come get me off of you. Because I'm not going to stop. Because I told you, time is over with. Those days is gone. And Prentice, I know those two goose don't have the sense enough to choke me to death. You told those boys to kill me. Well, damn it, I'm going to kill you if I get my neck around, this rope around your neck. All right, Coco's still upset about it. I understand there, uh, King. That should be interesting to have uh, Prentice immobilized like that. It'll be very interesting. I can just tell you this, Bert. Like I said, all you're going to be able to do is stand there, feel what it feels like to be a cocoon, and watch your boys lose the belts. They're going to be around our waist after Monday night. All right, the word from the king, and Coco beware. It should be mighty interesting, and I tell you what, that's a good place for Burt Prentice to have him so he can't get around that ringside. Rex King, Steve Dahl, scheduled in action right here, coming up. Well, Rex King and Steve Dahl, Simply Divine, they call themselves, going to be on the way to the ring right now. They've asked for a moment of interview time. Prentice has asked for interview time, and reluctantly, we have to uh, have to oblige. They are, after all, the USWA World Tag Team Champions, and they, they signed on the line right here a few days ago with Burt Prentice. Oh, shut up! Who does Jerry Lawler think he is that he's going to come out and tell me what's going to happen to me Monday night in scummy little Memphis? One of these illiterate cameramen, put your camera on this crowd. Do you think, do you think for one minute that I'm going to lower myself to let anybody show the crowd? Look at these people. They've not bathed in 17 days. They're not going to touch me. They're not going to wrap me in nothing. Eddie Marlin, you're getting a call from my attorney as soon as this show's over. It's a sad day when the king of wrestling and that fat little punk Coco Beware Talk about me being overweight. Coco Beware has gained 300 pounds in the last seven weeks. You gotta come out here. It's a sad day. You're gonna cry and make excuses when you've been beat by the greatest team in professional wrestling. Simply Divine simply embarrassed you last Monday night. And now you want to come back. You shouldn't even have a rematch and you're scared of me. You better be scared. You better be afraid of these gorgeous body standing here. Remember, Houdini has nothing on me. Doll man, tell them how it is. They're scared. It's like this right here. There ain't no way. 
So you're letting these slimy fans lay a hand on our manager. But let me tell you something, Jerry Lawler, and let me tell you something, Coco Beware. We showed all the people that you're nothing but a couple of preliminary bums. Now, I don't know what kind of strings you pulled, and I don't know how you got on that side, but the outcome is going to be a little different because we're not going to pin your shoulders this time. This time, we're going to make you quit. Right there, in front of all your idiot fans, we're going to show you who is the real trash of Memphis. Well, that's you, you pretty much heard it. All I've got to say is, Lawler, Coco, beware when you're the greatest team in the sport of professional wrestling today. They don't just call you another great tag team. What do they call you, Rexy? They call you Simply Divine. Because they are Simply Divine. Go destroy these punks. We got to let this Lawler and wear them here. Climbing into the ring right now, Simply Divine, Rex King, Steve Dahl, their manager, Burt Prentice. They're going to be going against Sam Norris and Chris Holliday in a match here today. What do you want, Prentice? You know, Dave Brown, I wonder if Corey Macklin knows that the USWA is looking for a replacement for him. Prentice, it would have been nice if you hadn't showed up again in the USWA and yeah. signed his tag team. It was much nicer when Burt Prentice wasn't around. Oh, as right. always, Steve always. Dahl of Simply Divine picks up Sam Norris. Oh, gives Norris a backbreaker in there. Oh, I wish it was some kind of way we could replace Burt Prentice. Simply Divine, a heavy, heavy favorite in this match. Non-title match, of course. A couple of young guys and Sam Norris and Chris Holliday. Why would they want to wrestle uh, the world champion? Well, of course, if they can get a victory or even look very good against this team, It'll help them out. Not only is it an education, although a very tough one, it uh, it would uh, move them on up in the rankings as they as they try to head toward championship caliber matches on a regular basis. Yeah, that's indeed. Uh, Chris Holiday steps in there with the likes of Rex King. Good drop kick from King takes him down. Oh, it's not Jerry yeah, Prentice, Prentice uh, using that uh, substitution, mental substitution there. Is, a, is quite wrong. That is no comparison with Jerry Lawler or Jeff Jarrett or Coco Ware or anybody else. Big form from Rex King takes Sam Norris down, tags Steve Dahl. Dahl comes in and, boy, nails Sam Norris with a right hand in there. Mr. Norris having a rough, rough day here. Steve Dahl with a big slam. Look out off the rope. Big knee from Steve Dahl. Chops it down on Norris. Takes him and throws him out onto the floor. Didn't even attempt to pin. He might have been able to get a three count there, but he didn't even try. They've thrown uh, they've thrown Chris Holiday out on the floor on the other side, too. Yeah, Bert Print is out with this insult, slapping Sam Norris over here. Norris back in the ring, and uh, Steve Dahl telling him, hey, come on and fight back. Now, Norris uh, kind of gave it half of an effort there, and I'm not sure that wasn't uh, a mistake to, uh, to even try that. Boy, Steve Dahl just looking for an excuse, trying to give himself an excuse to beat up on Chris Norris. Or Sam Norris, I beg your pardon. Rex King climbs up on the second rope. Oh, boy. Big drop kick, King comes off of there. Some kind of heavy move from Rex King. Dahl was holding Norris up, and King came down with a big drop kick. Boy, he came flying off of there. On Sam Norris, slams down on Norris with a right hand, picks him up, slams him down hard. King comes off the rope, drops a leg on him, goes for the pin. He Good has had him there, only gets a two, picks him up. Insulting Sam Norris, that's what Rick King is doing, had him pinned. Oh boy, reverse neck breaker on Norris. Takes Sam down, and Rex King and Steve Dahl put the boot to the neck. Well, I bet you won't have to wait long to get a match with Jerry Lawler and Coco Ware, or the King's going to be looking for you somewhere down the pike. I guarantee you that, Bert Prentice. And not only that, he doesn't have to beg for one either, because yeah, the King and the right. Birdman are looking for him. Look at that. Two and Dahl picks him up. 
Yep. Refusing to go for the count of three. Booed right to the face of Sam Nars. And Steve Dahl slams him over to his corner, grabs Chris Holiday, flips Holiday over the top ropes, sets him up and drop kicks Chris down. Well, that standing drop kick, he just picks those feet straight up off the floor, off the mat, and just knocks his opponent down all the way across the ring. Simply divine, come down on Chris Holiday, slams him right into the mat face first, and Rex King picks him up. Oh, look at this. Tag in and out from Simply Divine. Could have had them out one about two minutes ago, this King and Dahl. Dahl is setting up Chris Holiday. Rex King comes off on top of him. Boy, he rolls Holiday up. One, two, three, and Rex King and Steve Dahl, Simply Divine, get the win. Mercifully, they finally went for a pin, but it looks like they're not through yet. They continue. The pound on uh, Norris and uh, and Chris Holiday. After the bell has sounded, the match yeah. is over. Simply Divine has won the match. Prentice, Prentice, it's all over. This is this is. Uh, if you're trying to impress us with this display, you're not doing it. You're impressing us in much the wrong way. Boy, they continue to jump on Sam Norris and Chris Holiday. Simply Divine, King and Doll. Oh boy. Bert Prentice, happy as he can be, he has the world tag titles on his arm. He is just allowing the uh, the team of Rex King and Steve Dahl to continue to beat up on ah. these two young guys. Hey, Coco Ware yeah, came in with a Coco. rope. Oh, look at this! Oh, he's got Steve Dahl, the king in the ring. Yeah, Coco Ware had a rope around Dahl's neck. He went up to Prentice, and Prentice was running on a 200-yard dash, getting out of here, too. Now, I tell you, they wasted no time when Coco and the King showed oh, up. Oh, he went out. He was Bro, Coco. Prentice left early. He took the belts under his hand. I know, Coco. Prentice took the belt, and he headed right on out of here. Coco and, and Lawler came in looking for him, but couldn't find him. Well, we'll see if we can find him. We'll be back in just a moment. Jeff is here with Miss Texas. Dave, I just got a few words to say to Miss Simpson and Brian Christopher. Now, Miss Simpson, I don't know who you are and who you think you are, but I'm just thankful that they've changed the card and it's gonna be a mixed tag. And it's gonna be Jeff Jarrett and Miss Texas against Brian Christopher. And yeah, Miss Simpson, you think you're a nanny and you're not used to being in the ring. Well, in the USWA, when you do stuff like you try to do and put whatever you want to do, whatever you try to in my eyes, well, they put you in the ring. And that's what's going to happen Monday night. Yeah, and I don't make a habit of hitting ladies. Whoa, but let me tell you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, wait a minute, yeah. Jeff. Wait let, a minute. Let me, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Miss Simpson! You bleach blonde bimbo! This here is the USWA. And this is Miss Texas territory. Now, when I get you in the ring, I'm going to snatch you bald-headed. And then I'm going to snatch that little maid uniform off to show your toe-pick legs. And I'm going to see if Brian Christopher thought you so cute then. Oh, I can't wait, Dave. Monday night, it's going to be a mixed tag. And it looks like Miss Texas is going to take care of you, Simpson. So, Brian, that just leaves me and you. And I'm going to get that title shot one way or the other. Jeff Jarrett, Miss Texas, they're going to be partners coming up. We're going to check the entire card for you right here. I can tell you, those two are ready. They are thrilled about the change in the match, which occurred just a few moments ago yeah. as Eddie Marlin brought us uh, the new revised card out, and that match was on it. I suspect they had something to do with a request of it right there, too. Let's check the entire thing. 7.30, Monday night, Memphis Mid-South Coliseum is the place you want to be. The opening match of the night is going to be Tony Falk. Oh, my goodness, who Brian Christopher brought out here and introduced as the legend, Tony Falk. He's going to be going against Steve Marino in the opener. Following that, the middleweight title will be on the line. Danny Davis goes against the other of the Marino brothers, Bill Marino, the Young Stallions. Uh, Marino, uh, uh, the first one going against uh, Tony Falk, and then Bill Marino getting the title shot in yet another match. Hubcap on a pole match. The Masters of Terror will be going against PG-13. PG-13, of course, known for carrying around that hubcap and known for uh, occasionally using it in, uh, yeah. in 
a match or two. Well, this time, go put it on a pole. Whoever gets it, Masters of Terror or PG-13, are going to be able to use it in the match without fear of disqualification by the referee. Then, uh, this is a change. Uh, the belt on a pole match is going to follow that. The pole is going to be there anyway for the previous match. And after what went on with uh, Jeff Gaylord and Principal C.W. Bergstrom, brought in by Mike Samples, Eddie Marlin said, hey, let's just leave the pole there, put that belt on top of the pole, and whoever gets it can use it legally in this match right here. Jeff Gaylord was mighty unhappy about what happened. I mean, we were just trying to interview him, trying to talk to him about the situation. All of a sudden, here comes Sample and Bergstrom and, and uh, jumped uh, Jeff and had him over here on, on the uh, side of the ring, and Gaylord was livid when he yeah. left here. He is going to be trying to get his hands on that belt and go after Principal C.W. Bergstrom in this match. Following that, uh -huh. I'll get ready for it. <laughs> Brian yeah. Christopher, Miss Simpson on one side of the ring. Miss Simpson in here, uh, uh, Johnny Polo says, Brian, you're my best friend. Here, I'll, Here's how I'm going to repay you. Uh, Miss Simpson is a nanny. She's great. She'll take care of all this sort of stuff. And, and, and all of a sudden, she's interfering in the match here because she's unhappy with what's happening to, uh, for, to first Johnny Polo and then Brian Christopher. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at some of the things that, that were happening here that brought about this match. There she is with some of the uh, cleaning supplies over at, uh, at ringside. And uh, Jeff Jarrett just closed line there by Johnny Polo. But she has been watching as Polo has been getting the worst of it from Jeff. She climbs into the ring carrying that bucket of cleaning supplies with her, and I'm still not sure what that can is, but I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like some of that new foam that you spray on tires where you spray it on, don't have to wipe it off, and that, that she she grabbed it and she just sprays that foam all over Jeff's face. Yeah, and smears it in and, and all. Yeah, smears it in there. And uh, yeah, Jeff, boy. of course, is being held down by, uh, by uh, Polo and uh, Tony Falk both in there while she is smearing that uh, stuff in his eyes. And as a result of that, then Miss Texas was watching all of that from, uh, from the uh, dressing area. She was watching it on a monitor. And as, as, uh, as Miss Simpson is in there with, with a broom now beating on Jeff Jarrett, finally, Miss Texas has seen so much of this that uh, she's not going to watch anymore without coming in and, and taking care of business. So keep your eye on what's happening here. As right about there comes Miss Texas roaring into the ring. And Miss Simpson all of a sudden finds that uh, she has met her match, I think. <laughs> Look at that, as Miss Texas just uh, takes Miss Simpson out of that action. And you can look for more of the same coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Miss Texas mighty unhappy with the situation, and she is going to be looking to keep Miss Simpson out of the action, which, as Jeff said, then just gives him the chance to uh, be in there one-on-one -on -one a bit more against Brian Christopher, and as he continues the quest to eventually eventually get that return uh, match for the uh, uh, Southern Tag title, uh, or the uh, Southern uh, Heavyweight title. Then the USWA Tag titles will be on the line as Simply Divine Rex King and Steve Dahl will be defending against the King, Jerry Lawler, and Coco Beware, Burt Prentice, and let's modify that a little bit. It says straight jacket, and that's what we said earlier, but I think probably you heard the explanation that the King gave uh, due, to, due to the Prentice's lawyer calling instead of a, a, a real straight jacket. Uh, this may be even better. They're going to put him in a big old garbage sack, tape him up, tie him up. He can be at ringside, but he's not going to be able to be moving around too much and hopefully not interfering in the match at all as he is at ringside. USWA Tag Team Titles will be on the line. What a night, what a card. Oh, up. yeah. Monday, 7.30 at the Mid-South Coliseum. We will be back with more USWA coming up. Well, our opening match of the day, our scheduled opening match, never occurred. We were scheduled to have Jeff in here going against Johnny Polo, Scotty Flamingo. Some people still know him as uh, Johnny Polo, but uh, Brian Christopher gave, gave him the day off and said, no, Jeff, you beat a legend, a true legend, and I'll give you a, a, a return match. Well, he brought Tony Falk in here. Uh, the technical outcome of the, Here's Coco Ware yeah, coming Coco's this way. Out. Technical outcome of that match, by the way, was disqualification on Tony Falk. Coco. Hey, I just want to come out here and clear something up. That printers want to call me fat. Well, Bert Primus, you're so fat that your bathtub at home has got stretch marks in it. So, Prentice, I can't wait till Monday night. I'm going over to Jonesboro, Arkansas, and I'm going to take that Prentice, and I'm going to chase him all over the building until I get that rope around his neck, and then I'm going to choke me a turkey over in Jonesboro. 
I can't wait, Dave. Jonesboro, Arkansas. Coco's going to be there. He's going to be looking for Bert Prentice. He was out here looking for Bert a little bit earlier here in the King Both, and Prentice had left yeah. very, very quickly. Maybe uh, Jonesboro is a place he'll catch up with him. Let's uh, let's take a look at some of the rest of the action uh, that uh, occurred here today. Corey, we mentioned that opening match uh, with uh, uh, Jeff, uh, which uh, uh, Jeff uh, going against Brian Christopher. He's been trying and trying and trying yeah. to get a rematch for that uh, Southern heavyweight title. Christopher won't give him the match, puts all these stipulations up. Finally, it looked like today was the day where Jeff would get the rematch, but it was not to be. However, uh, maybe a better match uh, is going to be a result uh, from uh, all the action here today. C.W. Bergstrom, oh, principal. Boy. C.W. Bergstrom. Yeah, from the Board of Education up in Oregon, that yeah. my example says. And this principal, Bergstrom, boy, he's a big guy and looks impressive for his wrestling and all, but came out and just trying to humiliate Freezer well, Thompson in there. But you know, that strap and That's all, true. Right? And Freezer, you know, Freezer is a, is a fine wrestler. I think wrestling fans oh, yeah. uh, know uh, Freezer around this area here. And, and uh, you know, Bergstrom beat him. Okay. Yeah, he beat him. But uh, there's no excuse for what he did there. And samples, uh, some of the stuff samples. See, problem with samples, he takes the truth. And then he twisted. He twisted. And that's, I'm sure, what was going on with him a little bit here today. Then final match, King and Dahl, uh, Simply oh. Divine, going against the young guys, Sam Norris and Chris Holliday, who never really had a chance. Not to take never anything did. away from them, but uh, when you look at rankings worldwide, King and Dahl right up there, and they have the belts. Oh, they just dominated Norris and Holliday in that battle. We're out of it. We'll uh, we be back next week with more. Look for you then. Until then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA.